So uh, my name is Dominic Williams, and I'm introducing Phi, which is a decentralized commercial banking system that creates a stable currency as a side effect. It gives out loans algorithmically and creates a stable currency. Now, let me just work this out. So before we look at Phi, let's just recap the problems with commercial banks quickly. So commercial banks have massive infrastructure costs, HR, buildings, compliance, that kind of thing. And all of these enormous costs in commercial banking um, end up on your loan interest and financial charges. They're also, uh, they kind of make chronically bad judgments when they're giving out loans. And this is one of the things that exacerbates the credit cycle, which is very damaging to the world economy. And of course, the uh, big example was 2008, when we had this massive deleveraging that cost, cost the world trillions of dollars. They also are a major threat to civil liberties, because um, as money becomes more digitized, if your access to the banking system is removed, you're pretty much just frozen out of everything. And actually, many people in crypto have already experienced what it's like to have bank accounts shut down um, because you've uh, been, been taking a transfer from an exchange or something like that. So uh, stable coins, let's just recap that quickly. Um, there are two main approaches to stable coins uh, currently around at the moment. The first is uh, something a bit like make or die, where you have uh, collateral on chain, market makers, margin calls, that kind of thing. Problem with these kind of approaches is that they're inherently unstable. You create a kind of Rube Goldberg device, okay? And when you put it under stress, it'll tend, it'll tend to fail. The other approach is to uh, use tokens as bearer shares, colored coin bearer shares, with collateral actually held in a bank or other financial institution. Now, that does succeed in producing a kind of stable, robust system, but of course the problem is the banks will want to dictate policy in relation to how these coins are used. Uh, people and contracts will have to be authorized, and of course you add in the geography of the bank and the jurisdiction of the bank into what would otherwise be a very much extranational system. So quickly, um, fiat money, fiat money is what we use every day, it's dollars, euros, RMB. Um, and not many people are aware of where it comes from, but it's actually created by commercial banks when they give out loans. So the way this works is that you go into a, a bank and say, I want to borrow $10,000. And if they approve the loan, all they do is flip some bits in a database to create the $10,000 from thin air. You get it. Um, on the bank's balance sheet, the loan is an asset, and the money they created is a liability. So what is fiat money? Fiat money, everyday money, is really an IOU. It's backed by the collateral of loans. That means that everyday money is backed by you know, cars, houses, business cash flows, personal guarantees, that kind of thing. So the aha moment is, OK, well, why don't we make the world computer give out loans algorithmically and create a stable currency backed by loan collateral, right? We'll kill two birds with one stone. We won't need these expensive commercial banks anymore, so we'll save the world a lot of money. And we'll also get um, this wonderful stable currency that uh, won't depend on intermediaries. So FI money is, is exactly the same as fiat money. It's backed by um, loan collateral. How might this work? Well, first of all, um, it in involves a network of validators. This is a bit like a proof-of-state network where uh, the validators are really kind of loan miners, if you will. Anyone can become a validator, in this and you do it by making a security deposit to the computer. In this case, the validator's deposited $50,000, and he can validate loans up to $5,000 in size, and the total aggregate amount of those loans can, can be up to half a million dollars. So how does a computer issue loans? Well, first of all, the, the, the person who wants the loan approaches a validator, and says, hey, I want a loan. If that validator agrees, they become the proposer. They um, create a loan application package using open source software, and they commit to it. 
uh, with a hash and they tell the uh, computer, hey, I want to propose a, a loan. The computer then randomly, at this point, randomly selects another validator and says, look, can you encrypt that loan package to the public key of the next validator, right? That next validator then becomes a checker. They look at the loan proposal and, and so on in, in a chain which is decided algorithmically until the, com the computer decides that the, 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 the loan application has been validated. Once the loan application has been validated, <coughs> the computer creates the PHY from thin air and gives it to the borrower. And bear with me for a moment and you'll see why the PHY that's created out of the thin air actually has value. So this, this chain of um, validators, the thing to remember is that it's randomly selected in sequence and, and it'll depend upon the size of the deposits of the validators and their reputation and things like that. Why do the validators do this? Well, um, when people repay their loans, it generates interest and the computer gives a share of that interest to the validators, right? So we might imagine that in this example, the proposer gets 60% of that interest because he'd put in the work creating the loan application in the first place. The two checkers get 20%. There's another side to this, which is that they're also underwriters, right? So if the borrower fails to make a repayment, the computer is going to take that repayment from the deposits of the validators, right? So we can imagine that the underwriting is in the same proportion as the rewards, and their reputation is also a risk. So this is how interest is generated. Um, let's imagine I borrow $10,000 and I've got to pay it back in 10 monthly installments of $1,100. Well, I get, I get $1,100 worth of FI, pay it back to the computer. The computer burns $1,000, which is the principal, right? Just burns it. I mean, it created it out of thin air in the first place, right? And the $100 interest is then distributed amongst the originating validators and, and also savers and investors who've placed FI at time. So this is, I mean, I, I've oversimplified this whole system, but intuitively this will give you a, 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 a grasp of why phi has value, even though it's conjured from thin air. When somebody receives a loan, or let's say I receive $10,000 in phi, they're going to place it onto a cryptocurrency exchange to get fiat that they can, exp that they can spend, right? So I've got $10,000 in phi, and I put a, a 10,000 phi sell order onto the exchange. But meanwhile, there are other people who've already borrowed FI and are, and are paying back their loans. And they have to buy FI in order to pay back the computer. And in fact, you can see in, uh, that the demand for FI will be greater than the, the supply, right? Because people are paying things back with interest. So I may, when I borrow $10,000, I get $10,000 worth of FI, but actually I've got to pay back $11,000 worth of FI, right? So uh, we end up with a system that doesn't involve banks, which gives out loans, creates a stable currency. The last remaining question might be, well, what stops somebody just taking a loan, getting their $10,000 worth of FI, and just walking away? The computer can't chase them, right? The way that works is uh, when they applied for the loan, the validator will have made them sign a contract that says, if you don't pay back the computer, the computer's going to take the missing repayment from my deposit, and consequently, I'll lose money, and so you will owe me that money. So if somebody doesn't repay the computer, they can um, activate this contract, and the borrower then has a debt directly to the validator, and the validator can just use existing... Um, you know, debt, rec debt recovery systems, uh, which, which are you know, widely available worldwide. Uh, so um, I'll post this um, deck online on my Twitter if anyone wants to look at it at their leisure. Um, I'm from a company called String Labs. We've got two projects um, at the moment. One is Fi, another one is called Affinity, which is a kind of business-oriented blockchain, which has some new cryptography and I think called the Blockchain Nervous System we're presenting on Saturday. Um, feel free to catch up with me later if, if you've got any questions. Thanks.